Hello and uh, welcome back to my video. In this video I will explain the basic about unit testing in uh, Python. And in this I will demonstrate a very basic and how you can begin to use unit test. So let's starting to explain why I should use unit testing. Unit test will help you to build a more bulletproof uh, application. It will not be bug safe, but you will catch up a lot of bugs before you get a random uh, system errors. When you, of course, in the daily basic in the company, have a big pressure to delivering uh, your code fast and in the same time you need to uh, delivering without uh, too many bugs. So let's uh, creating uh, two folders here. The first folders I will create should be unit test. Uh, personally, I love to have one folder called unit test, where I place all my test files inside. You can place it where you want. And then we build a package folder called library. Inside this uh, file, we can call uh, one file more if you want. And I want this. I want to call it company. And inside your unit test file, we want to create a new Python file. If you use PyCharm, you can create a unit test file, but that's building it from scratch. So you can see how you build it. So let's call it a test company. I always call it test and then the, the library file I want to, to test. In this case, I want to test the company function inside the company file. I could have called it the uh, library, library company. So let's do this to indicate we're working in the library and then the company. Because if we want to test something in the in the package file here, we can just remove the company in the new file and then beginning it. The first you the first thing you need to do when you build a, a test file, is, it's called the, the class name. What should you do? Uh, what should you call this test file? I would call this for test library company. Inside, I want to use unit test, and this is a test case. Of course, you need to import unit test, else it won't work. And then we only need one function inside here. And we will go back to this file, just a, a couple of minutes. Saving it and going for your company file. In your company file, we want to build a function here. Very basic function, we need to say get country. country and we'll do it based on the ISO code and default we say none and then we pass it it should do nothing in this case we have an empty function and if you uh, don't have time and you leave an empty function and some of your uh, some person in your team will uh, will find this function then they will use it and think why and what the purpose of this. So let's go in to the to the test file and define it. We want one test to say uh, allow country and uh, Then we want to want to disallow, and then we want we will keep the last one a little more. And disallow country. We want from the library. We want the company, and 
get country. So we only take one function inside because that's what we want to test. We can use uh, self as it equal to, and then we define what should we be equal to. What we want to be equal to should be true, and the second should be get country. The ISO code should be DK, like Denmark. And then we want to copy this. And we use Denmark here to ISO code. We, we know this is too long to be in ISO code, but for now that's perfect. And then we have false. If you right click in, in PyCharm and run unit test in unit test, then I will have two errors down here. If I put it up here, and then you can see the two uh, tests. Expect false, but you get none. And expect true, and you get none. And that's true. So in this case, I already have defined what should happening for this function. If we have a wrong one, if it's disallowed country, I need to return false. And if uh, the country is uh, true, then it should be a true here. So let's going back for to fix this problem. We can just call one here uh, to return true. And if we run it again, you can see we only have one error now. This is our country. So what we want to do now is uh, country. Um, a country dictionary and inside here we want dk and the country should be uh, let's say name Denmark and if is a code is equal to is in is a code sorry in country dictionary then we want to return true and else we want to return false. If we run this again, you will discover both here is correct now. So right now if we get it uh, inside, um, going back for a test, we have one. If it's allowed, then it's return true, and if it's disallowed, it's return false. And what we want to do now, it's uh, we, when you have a function here, we will expect to get uh, a boolean like true and false in the first one and in the second one we want the object the dictionary so let's one uh, let's get in, uh, inside here to say country here and return it up and the zero should be true and the second one should be a string no, it should be a dictionary. And then everything should be fine. And if we do the same down here, and say the first one should be false, and the second should, should be none, and then we can see. We can try it out here and say one here. Now it should give me an error in the test, and that's correct. We get uh, we, we don't have a type error for the boolean. So let's go back with the company, and here we want the dictionary with the ISO code, else we want none. 
front again. And something is wrong here. It's going back. Yeah. So it should be non type. But we know it should be none, so we can just listen on what's happening for the return type. And now it's working. So both test the past. So if it's disallowed, it's returned false in the first one, and then none of the, the second one. If you want to make it more readable, you can just say as it falls, and then remove this. And up here should be true, and should be the same result. Now we have the problem if uh, the ESO code is bigger than 2 or it's lower than 2 in the character length, then it's not a correct ESO. And then we have the other one. If you don't define anything, then you have a non type. So let's uh, make one uh, function down here to say test uh, race country and inside here we want to say self as it it's uh, erased here and what we want to do here should be a type error and for this we just pass and we need one more to value error. The only thing we need here is just to say this. And the type error should be if you are sending em uh, empty inside. So the ESO code doesn't is defined or then we have like Denmark here and we have a D or it's basically an empty string or ESO code here should be 12 then it's the integer so in this case we have two errors we can debug now. We have the, the type error and then the error up here. So let's go back for the, the company. Now we need to fix this. So uh, if ESO is none, then rise type error. need to be a string or a string then we should only have one bug now that's the value error if the value is not correct elif the length of the user code is different from two then we need a value error you say is code need to be two characters characters long and now you expect a new error. Let's see what's happening here. Now we basically hit an error in a disallowed country. And that's because we have typed the ESO code should be Denmark. And then it's not allowed because the value is returned. You need to be two characters long. So going back to our test case and we will say dk and we say da like Denmark and then we run the test one more time and then all the four tests is passed now 
and the good thing here um, will be at we have three functions uh, three functions here to, to test your code and you have built a strong uh, strong function here on more than you normal will do um, let's let's move this in the top so what you can do here is just you can explain to say uh, de and then say name Germany is spelling correct let's ask Google for that yes Germany I still think that's correct so that's perfect so that's mean if you're going to the test case again and you want to test Germany it's still test and if you test the UK it should be giving a bug because it's not exist so before we finished up here I will show a little little uh, fantasy track you can do because if you need to test in DK and DE you from the beginning probably want to to copy paste here and that will take a long time and will be a very messy so what I will do if I was you is creating the, a list here to say country test list ISO code test list and then I will say DK DE and then make a loop inside here a for loop to say for and ISO code is equal in this and going up here and say the ISO code going inside here should be the same and this should be working pretty well so let's say we want UK and Sweden and Norway then you can see we get an error here. Let's go down for the error. We have, a, we have a little errors down here. It's returned false and it's not true. So one of the codes inside here, it's returning a false. So let's go back for the for the company. And what we have here, it's what what of the country we want to test up. And then we need UK name United Kingdom and then we need Sweden name and then we need Norway and if you run the test again it should pass and it's doing so that's how you, you build a very strong uh, code and of course you can replace this code with anything else like uh, where well, you take all the countries out from a database or something like that it's up to you but this is how you have a very simple unit testing in in Python I hope you enjoy and I hope you want to subscribe my channel I will do more of this kind of unit testing and of course, if you subscribe my channel, you get new tech videos from me. And I hope you like it and share it with your friends. And of course, remember the thing in the right corner is the subscribe button. Thank you so much and hope to see you next time.